2009 began a journey that spanned from the Serpentine River Valley to the top of the Blow Me Down mountain range. Over the course of our five day hunt we seen over 30 cows and 8 bulls. We had some great weather, we had some great hunting. Sit back, relax and enjoy as we hunt for the bull moose on this episode of the Newfoundland Outdoorsman. All right, Sunday morning, October the 17th. No. Anyway, Sunday morning, we're gonna go for a moose hunt. It's a beautiful morning, minus four degrees, a little bit of frost on the ground, so hopefully we'll see a, a moose. We're looking for a bull. At this point, any type of bull, I guess. It's getting to be a little bit late in the season. Anyway, off we go. Point. There's a cow here in front of us. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a bull. Did a bit of calling there on the brow, stopped her. Hoping to stop maybe a bull around somewhere with her this time of year, but apparently not. Just winded us. God, she must have been 35 years. Call her right up to the Argo. We're sat here in the Argo. We're sat in the Argo and she come right up to us there. All we needed was either sex license. Yeah. We'd had some good meat for the winter. But we don't. You see? Nothing. Nothing. Woods and rocks. We're gonna have a lunch now. Probably do a bit of column while we're here. We're on the corner of Rudge Mash. Put a bottle of kittle, do a bit of column, get the collar going while we're eating. You never know. So we saw one cow and three other moose. It was dark. We didn't know what they were bulls or cows. Just as we were coming in the dark down the leads, uh, I could smell a moose when we drove by the trail. So I stopped, backed up, took out the moose collar. Jesus, we only made four or five calls, and we walked three about 20 yards from them. Too dark to see what they were. I think it was a bull and two cows. But you can't shoot unless you know for sure. On day one, we came close. We had just left the house, got to the leads, and we called out three animals right next to us. They were no more than 10, 15 yards away from us. But it was a little dark, and we had to let them go. The rest of the day, it was a beautiful morning, and we saw a number of cows. So, on day two, Justin and Barry would join us in their Argo, as they had eater sex licenses, and it wouldn't take long before we came up on a cow, and they had their license filled. Take a look. Going that way, they're going to find them. Oh, look right at him. See, there's a cow moose there. We got a bull only license. Our buddy's come down. It's got eater sex licenses. So we're going to see if she's going to hang on long enough for them to get a shot. She's watching them come. I have a funny feeling she's going to do it. I think so. Looking at us now. Look at us now. 
You got her. You got her. Yeah. If you go down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good time. What are you wasting all your bullets for? Two moose. Appears to be two cows. Let's see if we can get a closer look on the other one just to make sure it's not a bull. No matter how much you look at them, they don't have racks. <clears throat> Appears to be a cow and a calf. We're about 25 yards from them. I'm going to get ready and move on in to the burn point, see if we can see anything else. They're gone. Day three would be by far the greatest day of the hunt. It was a beautiful October evening when we decided to head up on the Blow Me Down mountain range. I would witness that evening something I'd never seen before in all the years of hunting. Five bull moose together in one group, jousting and fighting amongst themselves. It was a memorable evening. Take a look. So we took about half an hour to an hour here. This is a really bad spot. So we put down a few sticks, had some ground to get us up over this rock. One more bad place up above. We're going to spend a half an hour, an hour. Uh, it's delaying us a bit, but it's well worth it, of course, to be going up much safer and much easier. So we're going to spend a bit more time here, move up, fix the next spot, and head on top of the mountain.
Beautiful sight in nature right there. I was gonna shoot one of them, but I'm not. We're on top of Blowing Out Mountain. It's nothing really big. Probably a couple 10, 12 pointers there. Not worth my effort tonight coming on dark all by myself. But them go for another time. I'm probably about 125 yards right now. Move something in 2009. Day four brought much of the same. Beautiful weather, but all cows and calves. We saw nine animals that morning. Uh, cows and calves mostly. I was starting to wonder if there was a bull left alive on the country. Take a look. All right, we're up in the gap here. That county calf just walked across in front of us. We were tracking the one in the snow. There was three animals down below. We went in tracking them, of course. 
It's pretty quiet this evening, so they took for it up over the hill. So I circled back to the mash, caught them crossing. I suppose I was 50 yards from them. Hunting in the gap. Again, two beautiful calves. It was nice early this morning. We snuck them on two other cows on the rudge match. It would only be a matter of time that a bull would appear. We traveled back and forth now for five days, seeing over 30 cows and calves. So I knew that at some point, a bull would appear. That morning we set out again, beautiful weather morning. It seemed like everywhere we looked, there was a cow and a calf. Little did I know at the time that, at the end of this adventure, would be a bull. In fact, two bulls would appear. Take a look. Again, seems to be a cow and a calf. Another two cows, or is that a cow and a calf, I think? No bulls. Town of Berlue. I think one of those, that second one on the left, is a bull. So I'm going to try to sneak up on him. It's going to be hard to get close to him at this distance because we're right out in open, but I'm going to give it a shot.
So, we got up on the corner of Burr and Louis. Saw these two animals out in the middle of the mash. They were probably, oh geez, they were probably eight or nine hundred yards. I parked the bike in a little point of woods. I left. I snuck all around the edge of the bog. And I couldn't get close to them and stay in cover. So, I took my chances. The wind was in my favor. I took my chances. I crawled along the mash. I crawled along the mash. There's a little rise in the mash, which gave me a little bit of a hiding place. If I can get to that little rise, I may try a shot. I got to that little rise. Didn't even know if it was bulls or cows yet. When I got there, I put the glasses up. The first one was definitely a bull. I thought the other one was a cow. I watched them for a bit at about 220 yards. Then I knew that. Put the glasses back up. Two bulls. We had a, probably a four or five pointer and maybe a. a a uh, four or six pointer, two about the same size animals. Steady my gun using my uh, using my gun sling. Took the shot about 220 yards at the first bull. I seen him buckle over and I seen him limp into the edge of the woods. So I knew I hit him good. So we're gonna walk over now. We're gonna take our time. We're gonna skirt in through this. We're gonna give him a few minutes. If he wasn't killed, if I didn't hit vitals, he's going to lie down anyway. If I hit vitals, he was going to go 10, 15 yards and drop, bleed out. I'm going to walk back over now with the video camera. I'm going to take my way and skirt in through the woods to see if we can find that bull. I'm pretty confident that he's down there somewhere. All right, this looks like where he went in through. That looks like blood there. That's definitely blood. Gone through that ticket. I'm gonna go around. There he is. There he is. I knew he didn't go very far. Saw blood back here, probably 10 or 15 yards. All right. Not a large bull, a uh, four point bull, but you know, come, on, come on November, late November, that's bull enough. I'm a little bit sad that my moose hunting has come to an end for a year, but you know, with all good things, it must come to an end. So we're gonna go get the bike. We're going to get the bike in there, it's not too bad, I can get the bike right in there, power side is a little bit out, use the winch, getting brought up, and we're going to panchin, and we're actually going to open it up, panchin, letting cool, we're going to go back home, we're going to come back late this evening or early tomorrow morning with the Argo, and make it much easier. If I were to try to get this moose home by myself on one bike, it would be a very difficult task. <laughs> Alright, we got this animal cleaned up now. We're going to throw a couple tops over and keep the crows and the birds away. And we're going to head home, uh, get the Argo, and come back either late this evening or early tomorrow morning. You know, temperatures are near freezing, so this meat is fine here, even with the skin on. So we're going to leave it here, head on out. we got probably an hour and a half trek to get back on ATV. Come back and get this in the Argo. So, stay tuned. Moose hunting, 2009. I'm the Newfoundland Outdoorsman. Alright, Moose Hunt 2009 has come to an end. 
So we got our bull aboard, we're going to pack up and we're going to leave and head back home about 6-7 kilometers back home. Join us next time on the Newfoundland Outdoorsman.